This instrument here is a concert tone cornet. It's rather uninteresting, it's rather uninspirational as a cornet, but I'm going to do a video of it because I have it here to review. Um, but this review isn't going to be praising this instrument's virtues and glories and all the rest of it. So concert tone, or C-O-N-C-E-R-T-O-N-E, -E, the word concert and tone smushed together, uh, is a brand that was used by the M uh, M Montgomery Ward department store. What they did is they imported Czechoslovakian instruments, or made the whatever Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic was called back in the day uh, they imported these instruments between 1918 and 1939 so between the First World War and the Second World War and they st uh, they stamped the word concertone on the bell Czechoslovakia used to be the made in China as far as some uh, types of instruments would go you would get Czech made instruments, you would put your own brand on them and anyone could sell them. And this is such an example of what they came up with. Some of the distinguishing features is that it's not very nice, it's a very stuffy instrument to play, it's got a lot of resistance through it, it's pretty unpleasant. But some of the uh, distinguishing visual features is that they have this lead pipe design here. Um, there were a number of reputable manufacturers that made that, but um, Concertone uh, or the Czech makers also did this and they went sometimes to even further extents by wrapping it up, wrapping the lead pipe up a few times before it went to the valve section. Nowadays of course we try to eliminate bends where possible, so we, for trumpets at least we have it going straight into the third valve, or for cornets we have it going uh, around and then in again just to sort of make it a little bit more compact. This is a long model cornet. Um, it's longer than a normal cornet but not quite as long as a trumpet um, and there used to be a little uh, retention thing here so you couldn't pull the tuning slide out too far uh, and risk ruining a you know this piece of instrument that you've got um, surprisingly the valve the tuning slides work pretty well the valves work adequately the first valve uh, leaks a bit and actually as I'm holding it like this I can actually feel through these sort of um, small nipply sort of things that they've got on the bottom of the valve so I can actually feel a puff of air every time I push the valve coming out the bottom of it so that's interesting something that I'm going to say to pad out this otherwise unremarkable video uh, and it's quite clear that these instruments were mass produced. The valves are not marked 1, 2 and 3. They are marked 125, 126 and 127. Uh, why they would do that I have absolutely no idea. But I can just presume it's got something to do with their production line. This instrument is actually serial number 10. Um, I'm just guessing that it's serial number 10 because it has 10 uh, stamped on the second valve immediately below the valve number of 126. Um, and also when I look up the Horn Ucopia website it shows that these instruments were serial numbered very very low. So yeah, serial number 10, what an honour. If we look at the valves, uh, they have a bit of an interesting design in that they have the integrated spring as we're you know, not unaccustomed to seeing but we have a little metal disc here that sits on top of the spring so we've got the normal valve guide that may be seen there and then when the valve goes down instead of uh, you know, uh, just a little plastic disc coming with two protrusions coming off it as we might see with other integrated valve designs we've got this whole metal disc, the sort of metal washer that probably was you know, in World War One, being used on an aeroplane, um, being used to retain the spring. The spring does not collapse evenly. It's quite obvious that it's been uh, twisted and bent and it looks really quite naff. But if we compare that to one of the other valves, for instance the first valve or the 125th valve, we see another spring arrangement. This one's even worse. Um, doesn't allow a lot of movement on it and is a bit weird. The number 125 is stamped on the little brass inner part of that, which corresponds to the whole valve number. Something else to note about this is that the lead, uh, the pipes between the three valves are in a straight line. It's very uncommon for instruments to have uh, these interconnecting tubes in a straight line. If I have a look at this Buescher trumpet here that I reviewed last time, uh, we can see that it goes up and then down and if I have a look on my Huttle brand trumpet which is the only other one I have right next to me we've got the same thing 
up and then down. Cornets, because of the way that, uh, because of the similarities in their valve design, have usually the same thing. But this, not so with this long cornet, we have a straight line there. And it's perhaps that which contributes to the stuffiness. Um, that's really about all I've got to say. It's, um, the valves don't line up. The, these two ones stick out a bit further than this one. This one clicks, as I said, which indicates to me that a cork is missing or, or isn't there properly. Um, so really all there is else uh, for me to do is to play something on this abomination.